Well, good day, David. Tyler. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. How are you? How are you and That's your family? Good. We are we are doing well. In fact, right now, um, you can't hear it, but I can hear it. Kids are upstairs running around, just having a great time. So, no things are things are going okay in the uh, Oldry home for sure. Uh, but here we are. You know, we're a few weeks into this uh, self quarantine, this uh, this physical distancing mm -hmm. from others, and at this point in this whole experience, uh, we can start to feel a little bit more maybe tension even at home with one another. Uh, maybe some more anxieties are creeping in because of the situation. I mean, the novelty of being isolated and being at home has probably worn off for most of us at this point. Uh, there's certain temptations that we might be experiencing, certain boredom, uh, struggles with the faith, financial strain, maybe even issues with our kids. Uh, and you and I were talking about this, but you were referring to something that you, that you talked about being a G5 conversation. Do you think you can tell us a little bit about what you mean by G5 conversation? Yeah, G5 conversation just kind of happened. Um, our family was talking this past week about this, this week that we're presently in and just trying to talk about how we can uh, live well together in uh, close proximity. And um, in our conversation, actually, I probably was more of a monologue because I went on, but <laughs> in my monologue, uh, I just talked about uh, having, um, you know, Galatians 5 moments. And when I referred to Galatians 5 moments, I was thinking specifically of uh, the fruit of the Spirit. So we're going to need a, you know, we always need a ton of the fruit of the Spirit, but we're going to need an extra ton of the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, this coming week as we, you know, isolate ourselves together. Uh, so <clears throat> that's shortened up to G5. So we talk about having G5 uh, moments. Like, so, so we need to have a G5 moment here. We need, we need some fruit of the spirit <laughs> uh, <laughs> moments and to, to be able to, to really um, seek to practice that. Mm. But it, as, as I was thinking about that um, and preparing for today, I just thought, well, how does Galatians 5 prepare us to have G5 mm. moments? In other words, G5 moments don't just happen. Um, how, how does, um, how does wh what does Galatians 5 and Galatians, but how does it allow us to have those times? So uh, that's, that's um, you know, some, some of the questions that we're going to be asking today come out of Galatians 5 so that we can have uh, G5 moments as we go through these. Uh, I, I think, and, and like from your introduction, just G5 moments, just in the sense of everything's so new. Yeah, um, yeah. Like, what is it to stand in line for, you know, an hour before you get into a grocery store or uh, to spend all the time together? And what is mm -hmm. what does it mean to be isolated? How, how do we practice time or spend time well? So out of all of that, it's those G5 moments. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And like as we've as we've talked, um, you've said that the that we're going to be asking certain questions uh, today. But the first question that we can think of comes from chapter 5, verse 7, uh, and it says this, you were running well, who prevented you from being persuaded regarding the truth? Uh, you were running well. What happened, basically, is what Paul is saying, and he's saying this to the Galatians. Uh, this is what we're talking about at the beginning. Things seem to start out well. I mean, the, like, uh, being able to be home with the family sounded good, and it sounded good when this was only going to be a few weeks, and that things uh, things were going to get back to normal uh, after a few weeks. But now here we are, several weeks into this, and it's starting to look like this is going to be longer than a few weeks. Uh, things seem to start out well, and then perhaps they've gone not so well. So how does Paul deal with this question in this in this text? Yeah. I, f I find it um, I find it interesting that Paul that that's that's one, that's the one question uh, that he asks and and to me that's that's a foundational question. Uh, for example, we'll ask people how are you doing, and then sometimes we'll say, okay, I want to know how are you doing, or how are you really doing. And I think the reason why we do that is because how are you doing, while very personal question can be somewhat of an evasive question. In other words, if you were to ask me, how are you doing? I could answer it in so many ways. Um, and I could be a specific or I could be 
um, as general as I wanted to be, or um, I could give certain answers while keeping other answers mm -hmm. um, off the table. When someone's asking the question, how are you really doing? They're, they're wanting to get to the heart of how we're really doing. But sometimes it's hard to know even how to answer that question because how do we know how well we're really doing? Um, and I think that's what happens when the Bible asks questions. The Bible asks questions that we wouldn't necessarily ask, but it's really asking us, like, how are you doing in this area? And so what Galatians has done up to this point is laid out uh, the authority of God and God's word through the Apostle Paul, laid out um, a clear presentation of the gospel. Um, so people were seeking by works or you know, by, by their religion to earn favor with God. And, and Paul talks about, um, you know, it's, it's the gospel of grace. Um, it's faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, it's not by works. And, um, and then he comes along and he says, uh, you were running well. Um, you got this. And then um, what happened? Now, the um, Paul actually asked the question a little differently than I asked it. Um, Paul says, um, who prevented you from being persuaded regarding the truth? And I think what Paul actually does is he says, you're running well, and I'm going to ask you a question, but I, in the question, I'm going to answer the question. The reason why you're not running well is because your life has become disconnected from the truth. And it may not be our starting point, but when the Bible asks us, how are you doing in times like this? It's asking us, um, like, are you still connected to the truth, to the authority of God's word, um, to the gospel, to a clear understanding of the gospel, and how that impacts our life? So, for example, if we're a forgiven people, we will seek to be a forgiving people. If we are a loved people, we will seek to be a loving people. Um, so Paul connects us to the gospel of truth. So if we're tired of running, um, we can look to a lot of places, but Paul brings us and he says, who persuaded you to step away from the truth? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I love that concept that the gospel gives us uh, what we need to help keep us running. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna yeah. flush out just a little bit here here in a few moments. But you you yeah. mentioned. Can I just can I interrupt yeah, for a moment? For sure. That like you, it'd be interesting to hear. It's it's easy yeah. to stop running, right? Um, it's so it's it's such a relevant question. Uh, how many times do we you know maybe in this past week have we said I'm I'm so tired I'm exhausted yeah. I just I feel like I'm running a marathon here and I I just I just yeah. I want to stop and. We're looking for encouragement, and, and what becomes that encouragement? Um, we're persuaded of the truth um, of of God's word um, mm -hmm. and of the gospel. Yeah, so true. And and you you had mentioned um, that we get tired that uh, we get tired when we're in this in this battle. Um, Galatians speaks to this a lot. In fact, Galatians five fifteen says. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out, or you will be consumed by one another. Can you explain this verse for a moment and how this helps us understand our hearts? Yeah, that's it, the, the first question is, is are we still running? Um, you're running well, what happened? The second question, I think that helps us understand a G5 mm -hmm. moment, a fruit of the Spirit moment, is... Uh, found in, in Galatians um, 5.15, am I using my freedom, am I using my freedom as an opportunity for the flesh? Uh, so a little later on in Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, for you were called to be free, brothers and sisters, only don't use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but serve one another through love. So if, we're, if we find our strength in truth and in the gospel and in the word of God led by the spirit of God, then the question that comes out of that is the freedom that I have in the gospel, am I using it for my flesh? And so I think Paul does something amazing here because in verse 15, as you read, but if you bite and devour one another, watch out or you will be consumed by one another. What's interesting is Paul, in this um, statement, actually gives uh, a big picture view of what it is to live in the flesh. So, um, and, and we can, I mean, 
chapter 5, verse 15 really helps us understand sometimes what we're going through. Um, even um, yeah. someone might be, you know, be isolated alone. And, and they're having these conversations in their mind or their heart, or this might be in a marriage or a friendship or with children. Um, and it feels like we're just biting mm-hmm. and devouring one another. Um, it doesn't seem like our conversations go well. Or, um, you know, are, we could ask, like, are, are we even going to make it through this? Or are we just going to consume mm-hmm. one another? Like, who will we be at the end of, of, of this be- after all the arguments or after everything that's going on? And so... What Paul does is he gives the broad parameters of what sin and the flesh look like, um, the, the end result of it. If we live this way, then we'll just end up biting and devouring one another and consuming one another. But consuming one another is basically, or devouring one another, you know, you have thoughts like, yeah. uh, do I even want this person here at this time? Um, I, I would want them devoured so that they're, they're not in, 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 um, in the house at this mm-hmm. time or in my life at this time, whatever it might be. Uh, and so the question becomes, um, how, like, what does that, what does that look like? And this is where Galatians brings us to a surprising place. He says in verse 19, now the works of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. When we ask the question, how are you doing? How are you really doing? I'm not sure that that comes up as, how are you doing so that we're not biting and devouring? By biting and devouring, I think we usually mean, let's have good conversations. But behind good conversations is our heart. And here's where Paul says the challenge is. Paul says, we're going to challenge with, be challenged with temptations. Um, So temptations like sexual sin, sexual immorality, impurity, promiscuity, are going to impact our relationships with others. Um, Or the second set is worship sins. He talks about idolatry or sorcery. And then there's the divisive sins, um, breakdown in relationship, hatred, strife, jealousy, bursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envies. All of those are the heart behind our conversations. So, you know, strife, divisions, just not getting along, angry, disappointed with one another. And it's true, like, we spend a lot of time together and you can say, well, I'm just, I've never seen that side of the person before. Or, or just jealousy, or, or just bursts of anger, these uncontrolled um, tempers that, that flare up. So, you know, there's sexual sins, worship sins, divisive sins, and then just lifestyle sins. Talks about drunkenness, orgies, um, and the like. So all of these stand behind um, what can be going on in our heart or in our relationship that actually cause divisions. Um, But that's how the Bible asks, how are you really doing? Um, Are you battling sin? Are you... Um, <clears throat> are you yeah, fighting well, against it's so, these so true, and I, I can't help but think about so many other a- passages of Scripture that kind of speak to this, uh, Ephesians 5 being one of them. When you look at Ephesians 5, it's the, it's the famous passage of, of Paul talking about um, the, the armor of God and talking about uh, how we're supposed to take up the whole armor. But what I find interesting is that in this passage, the focus is on that we're battling not against flesh and blood, but against uh, powers of darkness, cosmic powers over the present darkness, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And as I was thinking about this, um, my mind's drawn to uh, a, a recent devotional in Paul David Tripp's New Morning Mercies when he says this, don't be discouraged at the spiritual war you're called to fight every day. The Lord Almighty is with you and wars on your behalf. And even when you, when you think of that passage of Ephesians 5, uh, Paul's using language like, be strong in the Lord, put on the armor of God, stand against the schemes of the devil. To this end, keep alert with all perseverance. So I just love how scripture connects in so many different ways with that. And so if it's an opportunity for the flesh or if it's an opportunity for faith, uh, what could be the next uncomfortable question that we should maybe be asking? Uh, 
Yeah, I, this leads to um, the, the G5 moment or the Galatians 5 mm -hmm. moment, at least as it was initially in my mind. So what is, what is mm -hmm. truth and what's preventing me from truth? Um, what battles am I taking um, or, or am I battling right now? And so that leads to the, the third question. And the third question mm -hmm. um, has to do with verse 14. Uh, for the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, love your neighbor as yourself. So am I mm. serving others through love? Um, the list of sins is really serving self in pride or serving self in selfishness. And so this is where the gospel asks us, how are you doing? And the question becomes, am I serving others through love? Now, here's the encouragement. Um, the encouragement is in verse 15, or verse 16. It says, I say then, walk by the Spirit. So we're called to obedience. We're called to battle temptation. Um, and we're called to serve in love. But uh, at the end of verse 18, or verse 18 says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And so we're to walk by the Spirit, but... Mm -hmm. We walk by the Spirit because we're led by the Spirit. In other words, to be led by the Spirit is to, to be brought mm -hmm. through, to be carried. Um, the Holy Spirit uh, takes us and gives us the ability to walk with Him. And so we're going to say, man, I'm not very good at this, and we're right. Um, but the Holy Spirit gives us the strength and the ability to walk differently. And mm -hmm. the fruit of the Spirit is just loving one another. In fact, the, the broad title is the first fruit, or the first aspect of the fruit is love. And then joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you can, you can say, man, mm -hmm. I, that is the battle. Like, it's not just... The, the battle of the flesh, but am I really serving and, and loving one another? And so we need those G5 moments. We need those fruit of the spirit moments w where it's, uh, Lord, just, just give me some gentleness here or, you know, give me some, some faithfulness uh, just to follow through and to do the hard things um, or, or self-control mm -hmm. uh, and, and help, help us through that. So, uh, that becomes the, the fourth, you know, moment, gospel moment. Am I, am I serving others in love? Yeah, and I, and I can't help but think about, too, that when, when we sometimes have these conversations, we think about the, the, the physical or the tangible conversations we might have with, with one another or the tangible things we might do to somebody else, um, that we might um, get in an argument or lash out in anger or whatever it is. But all of these things also have to do with our hearts and what's inside and how we're feeding ourselves uh, with the truth or we're, we're seeking after something that isn't truth. Um, and we're because serving serving somebody in faithfulness, uh, we don't just do that um, just naturally. Right. Like there's got to be something that's cultivated within us uh, to do that. Um, not just in a physical, tangible way, but in other ways as well. I think about James chapter 3. Um, James chapter 3 talks about loving one another. In fact, the whole book of James is about how to love others, others well. And in James chapter 3, he says this, Who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in gentleness that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, it's demonic. From where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving, gentle, um, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without pretense. And the fruit of righteousness is shown in peace by those who cultivate peace. So even James is speaking of these same kinds of things, uh, allowing the Word of God to transform the way that we love others, even in moments of tension and in moments of dysfunction. Uh, so which brings me, what would be the next question that we would ask? Yeah, I think the, the final question that flows out of this, and it actually fits well with James, 
um, the passage that you just mentioned is what is it to practically walk in the spirit? Mm. Um, if we're to base our life on truth, the gospel truth, and if we're to seek to, you know, avoid devouring one another through actually not so much the actions of others, but through our own heart um, and guarding our own heart mm -hmm. and then actively serving one another in love. What does that look like practically? And I think that's where uh, the final verses of Galatians 5 really help us. So Galatians 5 verse 24 says, Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Um, a gospel conversation begins with confession. Uh, mm -hmm. We know our passions, we know our desires, we know the crucified one. And so we come before the crucified one and say, God, this is me. Um, this is going to be me during this time. And I really need um, your help. So if it begins with confession, then that leads to, to action um, or to a changed life. Mm -hmm. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Um, so to live by the Spirit is actually passive. So we're going to be led by the Spirit. Um, let us keep in step. So Lord, change my life. Um, your Spirit will give me the strength I need to live differently, to be a man or woman of God, a boy or girl of, mm. of God, to say I can, I can live the fruit of the Spirit and put off the, f the, f the flesh. And then finally in verse 26 it says, Let us not become... Uh, conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Um, the whole idea of just watching out for things, you know, watch out that if I'm leaning a certain way or if I'm provoking others or uh, mm. if I'm becoming conceited, if, if this, you know, isolation is becoming about me uh, and not serving others, then, then help me through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and as, you're, as you're explaining this, um, what would you say this practically means for a parent who's getting frustrated, uh, it's the you know umpteenth time that they've given certain instruction to their children that are now home all day, every day. Um, but what would you say to to a parent in that situation? Yeah, I you know whether it's a parent, whether it's someone who's just really battling with loneliness and battling with bitterness, and they just see that devouring themselves. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a marriage or you know just a friendship. Uh, and you just say, you know, we're just provoking one another um, and we're really battling with how to how to serve one another in love. Uh, I, I think part of part of this that, that works itself out in Galatians and specifically Galatians 5 is simply Galatians 5 talks about this. Um, it acknowledges that that will be the battle. And I think just to be honest um, with parents, mm. with children. Um, saying to, you know, saying to your children, like, I'm, I'm really battling right now. Um, this is, this is really hard. Like, I love you a lot, but this is, this is just a really mm. hard moment. And um, I'm going to, I'm going to pray for us and pray that God would help us um, know some G5 moments, some, some fruit of the spirit moments. I think being able, uh, Galatians 5 puts it in perspective. And, and like you, you quoted from Tripp, uh, great devotional, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. Mercies is it? Mercies new every morning. New new morning mercies. New mercies. Um, <clears throat> but you know, one one bad day doesn't make a bad parent. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it this is this is going to be you know as far as we know at this point long term. So to be able to uh, be honest and say um, you know the, this was a tough day, um, yeah. but I wake up tomorrow and. I'm going to, by God's grace, walk by the Spirit and, and be led by the Spirit. And then finally, I know the first one seems a little, like the first question about truth seems a little obvious. But boy, mm -hmm. if we could focus on the truth, like even just the truth of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. You do not wake up in the morning and drink your coffee apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, he enables you to put on... Uh, the the new life to put on the fruit of the spirit so you know be honest be realistic be focused be honest um with who we are be um folk or oh, i forget my second one <laughs> be honest what was the second be, one were be you real listening be realistic <laughs> be realistic there it is be realistic um one bad day we, or one yeah. bad moment um, ask for forgiveness mm -hmm. and we move forward in the strength of, mm -hmm. of God 
and then be focused on the truth and know his power and know his presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps a question we should be asking ourselves every morning and even be praying to God is just asking, how can I love others well today? Uh, What does it look like to love my kids today, to love my spouse today, to love my neighbor even down the street uh, today? But how can I be a vessel of God's grace and love and mercy in someone's el- in yeah. someone else's and, life today, and to know that we're not good at yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I will I will naturally yeah. not have a good day, mm-hmm. but I seek to walk by the Spirit, be led by the Spirit in the freedom, and that freedom strikingly is to love and serve others mm-hmm. um, by the fruit of the Spirit. Wonderful. Well, thank you, David. Uh, this was a great conversation Thanks, to have. Dave. I think an important one to have. And we are, we are trusting and, and hoping in the goodness of the gospel in these days as we do every day. Um, but we are praying for those who are listening. We're praying for you. Uh, we're praying for one another. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. we're seeking to, to walk in uprightness, in resting, in the gospel, its truths, and how the truths of the gospel even impact uh, our moments that we're facing today. So thank you.